Hello, welcome to another module in this MOOC on CDMA, a MIMO and OFDM wireless communication system. So, in the last module we had seen the motivation or we had basically seen uh, 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 how these uh, wireless communication technologies that is MIMO, CDMA and OFDM technologies have enhanced the data rates and reliability across different generations of wireless communication systems. So, now let us start uh, our study of uh, these communication systems. So, to understand the motivation behind this, let us first start by understanding the challenges in the context of wireless communication system. So, what are the challenges for So, what are the challenges for wireless communication system? That is, let us say we have a typical wireless communication scenario with a base station mounted on the top of a tower. So, this is my base station or my transmitter and I also have my mobile station or my mobile which is at the user and when the transmitter and this is also let us consider a downlink scenario in which the base station this is transmitting and this is my receiver and of course, when the base station is transmitting typically what I have is I have the signal which propagates and reaches the mobile. So, this is the signal which is propagating from the base station or the signal path which is propagating in a straight line from the transmitter to the mobile. However, in a wireless communication scenario unlike a wire line uh, channel there is no guiding medium there is no wire between the transmitter and receiver. So, while there is a straight line path between the transmitter and receiver there can also be multiple reflected components which arise from for instance objects such as trees. So, these are some trees in the wireless propagation environment and you can also have some other objects which deflect the signal for instance such as buildings these are my So, there are trees, there are buildings and these what these are doing is these are deflecting or these are scattering the received wireless signal. Therefore, these are known as these are also known as as scatterers. So, these trees and buildings they are known as scatterers which scatter the wireless signal as a result of which you have not only the straight line component, but also you have these multi path components these components which are arising from the scattering action of the scatterers that is the trees and the buildings in the multi in the wireless propagation environment. So, what you have at the receiver if you can see this what you have at the receiver is multiple signal components. So, you have multiple signal components at the receiver this component which is the straight line component is known as the line of LOS or the line of sight the line of sight component. These components which arise from the scattering action and which are not which basically are the deflected components these are known as NLOS or the non line of sight. these are known as the non line of sight component. So, we have a multi we have a multi pa propagation environment wireless propagation environment in which there is a line of sight path between the transmitter and receiver 
and also there are multiple non line of sight components and together what we have is therefore multiple signal components at the receiver and therefore this is also known as a multipath propagation environment the wireless communication environment the fundamental aspect of the wireless communication environment is that it is a multipath propagation environment so this is a so this is a multipath multipath propagation so this is a multipath propagation environment and therefore what we have in this multipath propagation environment is we have the superposition of these multiple radio waves or these multiple electromagnetic waves or these multiple radio signals so this multipath propagation environment this leads to superposition this leads to the superposition of multiple signals as a result now we know from our basic knowledge of physics that this when this multiple electromagnetic uh, signals interfere or superpose with each other they basically interfere and that can lead to interference which is either constructive in nature or destructive in nature so this leads to first interference and this interference can either be constructive interference or this leads to interference which is either constructive or destructive if the instruct if the interference is constructive that enhances the signal amplitude if the interference is destructive then that basically attenuates the signal so when we have constructive interference so constructive so constructive interference amplifies constructive signal amplifies received signal amplitude destructive interference the destructive interference this therefore attenuates so the destructive interference attenuates the received signal amplitude so this leads to an interference environment the multipath signal propagation wireless environment leads to interference of these multiple signals at the receiver uh, which if it is good can uh, be constructive in nature this constructive interference which enhances the signal strength but also it can be bad that is when it is destructive or destructive interference which leads to an attenuation of the received signal so what we would do we what we would like to do is we would like to develop a model for this multipath propagation environment so our aim is to develop a model for this multipath propagation environment to therefore understand this wireless propagation environment better so we would like to develop a model we would like to develop a model for this multipath propagation scenario and how do we develop for the model for this multipath propagation environment when we talk about a model in the context of engineering or communications we are talking about an input or output system so let's say we have a signal xt which is input to my signal to my wireless system 
and this is my output signal. So, this is my input signal and this is this is the output signal and this is my wireless environment or my wireless channel between the transmitter and receiver. We would like to develop a model for the response of this system that is HT is the impulse response of this system. We would like to develop a model for the response of this system. This is also known as the wireless channel. This is HT. That is what is the relation between the transmitted signal and the received signal that is transmitted signal XT and the received signal YT. To know that it is important or extremely important rather to basically develop a model for this wireless channel, the intermediate wireless channel HT. And once we develop a model for HT, then knowing the transmitted signal XT, one can basically get an idea or one can derive the received signal YT. Now, therefore, we would like to develop a model for this impulse response of the channel, wireless channel that is HT. And now, we can observe from the wireless environment that it is a multipath propagation environment and each path is characterized by two aspects. One is the delay because of the propagation, the other is the attenuation which is uh, arising from the scattering. So, each path, so let us say there are L paths, the ith path the ith path of the wireless environment is characterized by an a delay that is tau of i and then attenuation the attenuation that is a of i right so each ith path in this wireless communication system is characterized by the delay of the signal which is tau of i and the attenuation which is a of i. And from the perspective of signals, we can represent a delay, a system with a delay can be modeled as delta of the response of a signal which delays a signal by tau of i can be modeled as delta tau minus tau i, where delta is the direct delta function or this is the impulse the impulse which is shifted by tau i. And this is therefore, multiplied by a i which is the attenuation. So, this is a i which is the attenuation, this is multiplied by the impulse, the shifted impulse delta t minus tau i. Now, this represents a system that is a i delta t minus tau i represents the system which attenuates the signal by a i and delays it by tau i. And therefore, now if we have a system which has L multipath components from 0 to L minus 1. So, we have a system, we have a multipath scenario with L components that is 0, 1, so on up to L minus 1. And for instance, the 0th path is associated with attenuation A naught delay tau naught. The first path is associated with attenuation A 1, delay tau 1, so on up to L minus 1th path is associated with delay A L minus 1 and attenuation A L minus 1. And this gives rise to the channel for the 0th path, which can be modeled as, as we have seen the attenuation A naught, the impulse delta shifted by tau naught the attenuation A 1, the impulse shifted by tau 1, the attenuation A L minus 1, impulse shifted by tau L minus 1, that is the delay corresponding to the L minus 1th path. And now, what we will see, so this is the 0th path, first path and the L minus 1th path and the multipath impulse response is basically the sum of all these components. So, our multipath channel response 
because remember the received signal is a superposition of all the signal components. Therefore, the multipath channel response H of t is a sum of all these individual responses corresponding to the individual components. So, the multipath response equals sum implies my response h of t equals a naught delta t minus tau naught plus a 1 delta t minus tau 1 plus so on up to a l minus 1 delta t minus tau l minus 1, which can be succinctly written as the summation a i delta t minus tau i, i going from 0 to l minus 1. Therefore, now what we have done is we have now developed a model for this intermediate channel that is the response of the channel H t in terms of the attenuations of the paths and the delays of the paths. And what we are saying is this response H of t is equal to summation i equal to 0 to l minus 1 a i delta t minus tau i. So, this is the response of the channel, this is the this is the impulse response of the channel. All right. So, what we have done is we have been successful in developing a impulse response of the channel that is how to model the channel between the transmitter and receiver for this multipath wireless propagation environment. Now, let us look at the transmitted signal, the transmitted signal in the wireless communication signal system. The transmitted signal can be written as follows, what we call as a pass band signal S p of t equals the real part of the summation or S p of t is simply the real part of S of t times e to the power of j 2 pi f c t. Right? So, this signal S of t is our complex, this is termed as the complex base band this is termed as a complex base band signal this is up converted to a carrier frequency fc and this is transmitted over the air right this is transmitted over the radio propagation channel so fc is basically this basically denotes the carrier and e to the power of j 2 pi f c t denotes the modulation with the carrier frequency. So, f c denotes the carrier frequency, s t is the complex baseband signal and this s p t, this is termed as the this is termed as the pass band signal. So, I have s p t which is the pass band transmitted signal is basically the real part of that base bands, complex base band signal S t times e to the power of j 2 pi f c t, which represents modulation by the carrier at carrier frequency f c. For instance, and this carrier frequency plays an important role in wireless communication system. For instance, f c is approximately equal to, for instance, several countries operate GSM in the 900 megahertz band and for 3 g, for instance, for 3 g, f c is approximately equal to 2.1 gigahertz that is 2.1 gigahertz band and for 4G 
this is equal to 2.5 gigahertz band and of course these bands are not fixed these bands vary from country to country depending on the frequency bands allocated in that particular country that particular region all right so these are a rough indication of the different bands that can for instance for instance are allocated uh, in some of the major countries across the world for these uh, various wireless uh, communication systems and therefore what we have is that when this communication signal spt is transmitted that is this passband signal is transmitted across the multipath communication channel we have the different multipath components of course the component 0 is going to for instance we have looked at this previously that is the 0th path this corresponds to attenuation by a naught and delay by tau naught therefore which means the signal corresponding to the 0th path is basically the signal which is attenuated by a naught and delayed by t tau naught that is s of t minus tau naught e to the power of j 2 pi f c t minus tau naught. So, what we have is basically we have the 0th path which corresponds to attenuation by a naught and delay by tau naught. Therefore, the passband signal is basically attenuated by a naught and delayed by tau naught. So, therefore, I have the received passband signal corresponding to this component is given as a naught s of t minus tau naught e to the power of j 2 pi f c t minus tau naught. Similarly, for the first path which corresponds to a 1 and attenuation by tau 1, the received signal is a 1 a 1 times s of t minus tau 1 e to the power of j 2 pi f c t minus tau 1 and so on and so forth we have l paths. So, the l minus 1th component from counting from 0 that is so l minus 1th path which corresponds to attenuation a l minus 1 delay tau l minus 1 that will give rise to the components a. So, that will give rise to the passband signal a l minus 1 s of t minus tau l minus 1 times uh, e to the power of j 2 pi f c t minus tau l minus 1. So, these are, so what we are saying is we have l paths from 0 to l minus 1. The ith path is associated with attenuation a i and delay tau i and therefore, the resultant passband signal <coughs> corresponding to the ith path is given as the real part of a i s of t minus tau i times e to the power of j 2 pi f c t minus tau i. All right. So, these are the various, uh, these are the various signal components, um, uh, pass band signal components that are associated with the various paths. These are also known as the multipath components. These are also the various multipath components of the signal that are received at the, uh, that are at the receiver in this wireless channel. So, we will stop this module here and we will carry on uh, with uh, this analysis that is modeling the received signal at uh, the wireless receiver in the subsequent module. Thank you.